Praise the Lord. Let's do, oh, I want to see him. Hallelujah. You glad to be in his house? Hallelujah. God, take a deep breath and exhale it out, but don't blow too hard on your neighbor or nothing like that. God gave you that breath, and we're here to praise him with it this morning. Hallelujah. Look at all these youngins. Don't they look so good? Hallelujah. I'm so glad they're here. Y'all too now. Y'all too. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him. Come on, Sister Andy. Let's sing it this morning. Hallelujah. You stand if you're able. Hallelujah. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Morning souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without me then. But my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh. about it, Jesus Christ, the God of heaven, has not lost one ounce of his power. He's not lost control anywhere. What you see going on in this world is a fulfillment of what's to come. The end is coming. Have you read Revelation? But guess who wins in the end? The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Be lined up with him. The blood is the only way we're going to get there. Hallelujah. Power in the blood. Blood number 390. Y'all sing it loud. You know it. I know. Come on, Brother Jerry. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power 
salvation. In that blood is deliverance. In that blood is healing. In that blood is victory, Sister Angie. In that blood is triumph. Hallelujah. It looked like to the world it was over. Our Messiah has died. He's bleeding. He's hanging on this cross and it grew dark. But he did what he said he would do and three days later, he rose again. conquered death hill and the grave for us for us I told Children's Church last week when he died on that cross he thought about you and the plan he had for your life and one little girl said you mean he thought about me while he was yes he did he thought about us while he bled and died for our sins that ought to mean something folks hallelujah this old song old song says it's still the blood. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> when I don't feel like I can go another step, when it looks like everything around is crumbling down, it's still the blood yeah. where we get our victory. Hallelujah. 
Oh, let's worship him. Come on, Brother Jerry. Still the blood, folks. You can sit down if you want to be. Once I wonder in scenes black night and there away my sin nothing but, nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing, nothing yes. but the blood yes. of Jesus sister Tracy are you ready to take your children ready. out okay children you can be dismissed to children's church once the service in here is concluded you may go out and pick your child up in children's church they won't be dismissed from there you'll have to pick them up and uh, Sister Tracy, have them there ready for you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning to the book of John, the fourth chapter. 
book of John, the fourth chapter. It's good to see everyone this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Isn't it, isn't it good to be in the Lord's house? Yes, it sure is. Amen. It's wonderful to be here. Amen. Wonderful to be here and worship Him. It's wonderful to be in church with you. Amen. I worship the Lord with you this morning. I'm glad when we came, He was here. Amen. I brought Him with me. I know you brought Him with you. When we got here, we found out He's here. Amen. He's here this morning. John chapter 4, verse number 1. Do you have your place? Amen. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. And then cometh he to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being weary with his journey sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Wow. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof, himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Wow. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. I want to preach this morning. I want to read verse number four from which I'm going to take my text out of. Amen. And we'll give you the title of it. We're going to preach on a little while this morning. Jesus said he must needs go through Samaria. I want to preach on this title or subject this morning. He knows. He knows. He knows where you are. He knows what you are going through. And he knows what you need this morning. Jesus knows. Would you stand and pray with me for me? Ask God to help us to preach the word of God under the anointing this morning. Heavenly Father. As I come, to God, to break the bread of life, God, with these people. God, Lord, that that you have laid upon my heart, God. Ask you, Lord, this morning that you would anoint me, O God. Anoint me with the power of the Spirit, God, and the Holy Ghost, O Lord. Jesus, give liberty in this house, O God, Lord. Lord, we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, O God. Give me the words to say, O God, and the unction to preach me of As I can do nothing of myself, but I can do all things through Christ with strength of me. Have your will and your way this morning by the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, if there's one law, save them this morning. God, Lord, you know where they at, God. If there's one hurting, God, heal them this morning. You know where they at, God. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory in this house. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. He knows. Amen. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. And he knows what you need. 
As we look at the setting here this morning, the very words of verse 4 reveals that this passage through Samaria was not just another general preaching campaign, amen, by a preacher. Amen. But we do know this was an appointed time. We know there was an appointed need there in Samaria, a woman, amen, and Jesus, knowing that, said, I must needs go to Samaria. Amen. It says there in very specific reason for this trip, amen. If you read verse number 6, it tells us the exact location, amen. And it tells us the exact time. It was by well, at, amen, a certain hour of the day, amen, that he sat down. Verse number 7 then reveals the reason for his being there. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water from the well. All of this is telling us, amen, it reveals that Jesus knew why he was going, where he was going to. Amen. He knew who he was going to see when he was there. And he knew exactly the need that this woman possessed. Amen. Within her being. Amen. Now, if it's not enough for you already. Amen. In the, in the conversation that we've had here. That Jesus knows. He goes on and said. Amen. Now, ask her about her husband. Amen. She said. I have not a husband. Husband, amen. When Jesus said, Call him, amen, to me, amen. I have not a husband, he said, You've well said, but you have had five husbands, amen. And the one that you're with now is not your husband, amen. It tells us that Jesus knew this woman and her need, amen. He knows, church, this morning who we are, amen, where we are, and he knows what we're going through. Through. Amen. In many ways, this can be comforting to know that there's an almighty God in heaven who knows who we are, where we are, and what we are going through. For a child of God, that can bring much comfort. That can bring, amen, joy in troubled times. It can, amen, and it should. Amen. But for others, it may reveal, amen, and bring some fear that God knows exactly where you are who you are and what you are going through. What I mean by that, that He knows our heart. Amen. The thoughts and the desires of the heart, each and every one of us, you can rest assured this morning, child of God, that He knows our heart. Amen. He knows it. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. He's the only one that can look right now this morning into this sanctuary and not only here but across the world into each and every person's heart and know what is in their heart. Amen. He said, I search that heart. John chapter 2 verses 24 and 25 it said, Jesus knew all men and what is in man. Revelation chapter 3 in verse number 17 he says to a church you say that you are rich you say, amen, that you increase with goods and have nothing but I know that you are poor, blind and naked. Sure the outward might have looked fine. The outwards might have seemed in order but the inside the Lord sees. Amen. He knows our heart this morning. You can rest assured that. Second Kings chapter number 5 tells us a story, amen, of a, of, a, of a military captain of the Syrian army. His name was Naaman. He was a leper. Amen. He was a good man. He, he was a man that God had used in some way. Amen. His wife's little maiden, amen, said to, her, to her, the, the, Naaman's wife said, amen, I know that he, that he has his leprosy, but there's a prophet down in Israel, amen, that can help him. Well, she tells Naaman about it and he gets his goods and goes. He's searching for this man that can help him. This man that can cure him of what is seen on the outward appearance. That leprosy, those sores, amen. The deformity, whatever it had been that made itself manifest on the outside. He went to take care of that. The man of God sent his servant out when he finally got to where the man of God was and said, Naaman, go down to 
the Jordan River and dip seven times and you'll be made whole. The man was, Naaman got mad at this. He got angry. Why would he get mad? Why would he get angry? Amen. Because the prophet of God, the Lord showed him he's got more than just an outward problem. He's got a heart problem. He's got a problem on the inside and God knew about it. Amen. He said go dip in Jordan. What was so significant about that? It was the dirtiest, nastiest river of the ones that he could have chose. He said, look like this guy would have come out and just waved his hand over me and called on his God and I'd have been made whole. But he said, go down to the muddy river and dip in it. Amen. And he got mad. Yeah. It revealed what was in his heart. He was prideful. Yeah. He was a man full of pride. He didn't want to have to do that. But God not only want to touch the problem he had in his body, he wanted to touch the problem he had in his heart. Amen. Right. Though he was a good man, though he was used of God, he had something on the inside that God seen that nobody else did. And it was revealed when he told him to go dip. Amen. Well, there, amen, his servant told him, said, listen, if he'd have come out and told you to do some great thing, would you have done it? He said, I would. He said, then how can you not just go and do this thing that he ask you. He swallowed his pride and went and dipped down. One, two, three, four, finally seven times he come up. He's done washed away the pride now. Amen. When he comes up, his outward skin is made clean. It's made whole like a baby's skin. Amen. I'm telling you, God knows where we at. He knows what we need this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. And he wants to help us. Glory to God. He's an all-knowing God. Thank you, Lord. Help us. An all-knowing God. He knows our heart. It was pride that calls one by the name of David. I believe, amen, when Saul was pursuing him. Amen. He rose up and went in the night and cut a piece of Saul's garment off only to wave in his face the next day and say, see, you see, Saul, I could have took your life. Amen. Listen, God convicted him. God smote his heart because that. Amen. He exposed the pride that was in him. God knows what's on the inside. Amen. I'm telling you, I've had that to happen to me personally. Amen. I cut a piece of cloth off one one time not with a knife no not on your life but with the words of these mouth amen it was very insignificant I thought didn't mean a whole lot amen until I got in that prayer meeting and God began to deal with me about it and listen heaven was brass I couldn't get through I thought what's wrong I searched high I searched low God searched me finally he showed me the problem he said you took the sword and your mouth the tongue and you cut someone's garment this week Hey man, I had to go get that right. Yeah. Right in the middle of a prayer meeting. <laughs> Glory to God. Can you imagine that? Pull that brother up from praying and say, I said something that didn't, wasn't a whole lot. I didn't think, but God knew. Hey Amen. I said, I said something. I'm going to ask you to forgive me. Hey Amen. Oh, brother, you already forgiven. I got back in that altar in heaven, never been sweeter. You see, God knows our heart. We, we look like we're okay on the outside. Hey Amen. And I'm pretty sure most of you are, but I'm God knows what's in the heart. Hey Amen. He knows. Uh, not too long ago, I was praying to, at home. I'm telling you, heaven was sweet. Heaven was moving and all of a sudden in the middle of that God said I got something against you. Oh my. What is it Lord? I begin to pray. See God what, what have I done? I'm telling you great conviction come on me. Hey, I didn't know what it was. Had no idea. I'm praying God search me. Whatever it is. If I need to make something right with somebody. If I've done something. I need to go and correct. I'll do it God. Because I want to be in right standing with you. I'm not perfect. Amen. Lord you know my heart. And all of a sudden God showed me what I've done. And had great conviction come to the point. I felt. Amen. As I said. Almost condemned to hell. Amen. I'm telling you. When we see ourselves like God sees us. Amen. Far as having something in there. It ought to convict us to that point. But I'm telling you that precious blood of Jesus came when I said, Lord, I did not know. I did not know. Amen. That had happened. I did not know that's the way it was. And I repented of that. I'm telling you, glory came down. Amen. The blood came. Washed that clean. But God seen what was in the heart. Amen. We look on the outward such as Samuel did when he went down to find and the, anoint the next king 
of Israel. After God had rejected Saul, amen, he went down to the house of Jesse. Surely this one, oh, surely that son, oh, God had already told him to go to the house of Jesse. Amen. One of his sons is going to be the next king. Amen. Surely this. But you know who God chose? Little David. A little shepherd boy. A little boy. Amen. Keeping the flock that wouldn't have been brought in before the, the, the priest and prophet of God. But when he stood before Samuel, God said, that's the one I put my hand upon. Man looketh on the outward. But I look it at the heart. That's what the Lord said. Amen. He knows our heart. He knows where we're at this morning. Hallelujah. We could go on and on with other examples in the Word of God. Amen. God knows our heart. Amen. And it can be frightening. Amen. In some aspect of that. Glory to God. It can be, especially if there's something out of order somewhere. Listen, God knows the inside of the heart of man. One of the greatest documentaries I've ever watched that helped me. Amen. Spiritually, it was just a carnal documentary on Channel 10 Public Television. It was a, a potter and a potter's wheel. He put that vessel on that wheel. Amen. All that clay. And he began to spin it. Spin that wheel. He took his hand as he moistened all the time he took. All the care he took to make that vessel something to be gloried, something to be viewed, something to be awed about. Amen. Yeah, I don't know how they do that, but he began to shape and mold that clay into a vessel but all of, the, all of the sudden he stops and he begins to crumble it down and pound on it again and they said because on the inside, see we're looking on the outside there was a, a imperfection in there. There was something that needed to be got out of the clay and he felt it as he shaped the vessel on the inside. That's the way the Lord does us. He's shaping us. And when He finds something is it is displeasing to Him or that can cause a flaw or a fracture in the vessel when it goes to the fire, He wants to get it out. Because yes. He's wanting to make us a vessel of honor. God looketh on the inside. Amen. I've been on that potter's wheel many times. Glory to God. Oh, He sees something. Oh, He works patiently to get it out. Amen. He knows our heart. Not only does He know the heart for those, amen, of all of us, amen, or those that might be, have sin in their life, He also sees the pain. I take great comfort in knowing this woman was adulterous. This woman was a woman that would a public example, if you would. She was shamed in her life. But I take great comfort in knowing Jesus said, I've still got to go. I've got to minister to her. You see, because He didn't come for those that are whole, but He come for those that are lost. He didn't come for those, amen, that are well, but He come for the sick. Amen. That's the reason Jesus came. Because we needed a Savior. And He said, there's a woman down there. Yes, her lifestyle's a mess. Yes, she's in sin but I must needs go because uh, she needs me and he goes amen and ministers to her amen he not only sees her heart but he sees the pain yes this woman was living in sin yes she was a woman of shame he didn't come to condemn her but he come to make her whole amen he come to give her living water the water she had been drinking from the well from which she had been drawn Amen. Was not quenching her thirst. I'm speaking spiritually now. Amen. The, the lifestyle she lived never made her better. Amen. But listen. Amen. When the Lord came, He healed her. He touched her. He gave her living water. He knows the pain. He knows our pain. Now we as children of God know that God knows all. Amen. I, I'm so, th so thankful to that. Amen. And we may wonder sometime, even in us knowing that God knows all. Amen. Knowing that He can has everything under control. We still wonder sometimes, where is God in what I'm going through? Come on now. Come on. Does He know what I'm going through? Does He care? Amen. Yes. He still cares. He's on the throne. Amen. Though we may be tested, tempted, or tried, He knows. Amen. But it was in His time, the right time. I said it was in His time, the right time, that He came and sat by a well. I'm telling you, we go through things this morning, but it's in His perfect time that He comes and sits by us. Amen. And begins to refine us, begins to help us, begins to strengthen us. Amen. It's in God's time 
timing that he answers and God's timing is the right timing. Yeah. Mine's not. Right. Hey Amen. I have everything messed up. But God's timing is the right timing. Acts chapter 16, you'll find Paul and Silas. Hey Amen. They, they, they was beaten for the gospel. Amen. Cast in the prison. Uh, had a girl with the spirit of divination. Amen. They laid hands on her. Cast the devil out of her. Amen. And the owner brought accusation against them. Amen. They were beaten. They were locked in stocks and chains. Uh, they were put in the prison. Amen. But the Bible says at midnight. Listen, child of God. At midnight they prayed. At midnight they sang. At midnight the jail shake. Amen. At midnight their stocks fell off. Their chains fell off. At midnight they had a revival. At midnight a, 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 a jailer was saved. Come on, church. It might be midnight, but if it's God's time, and it's the right time. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows where we're at. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He knows what we need. Yes, he does. He cares. He cares for us. Amen. We ask ourselves, does God know? Does he see? Does he care? Yes. Yes, yes. He does. Amen. The psalmist David. Amen. Pretty much wrote these same words. Amen. In Psalms chapter 13. In that cave. Amen. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Have you ever felt like that? Amen. I know you have in the trials of life that we face. The psalmist David said that. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am removed but something happens here in verse number 5 I believe the Lord's come with great comfort because he said but I have trusted in thy mercy my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me church we are in our midnight hour sometime but when God moves it's his time and it's the right time. Yes, he sees. Yes, he knows. And absolutely, he cares for us. Each and every one. Not a person here in this building that God cares one more for more one than he does the other. Amen. He loves each and every one. Hallelujah. 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 This woman was an outcast. He loved her enough to go. Amen. Right on time he was. Amen. He let her know who he was. He let her know where she was. And he gave her the answer. If you'll just drink of this well, of this water that I shall give you, you shall never thirst again. We asked ourselves, does God care? Yes. Does he know? Yes. Does he see? Yes. Amen. David asked this, but I'm telling you, God cares. Amen. This was a man, amen, that took a stone and a sling and killed a giant, killed the champion of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Amen. When all the armies and all the captains and all the trained military men of Israel sat by and too fearful to move, David, this shepherd boy, went, amen, and ran toward this giant with a battle cry. Amen. With a sling and a stone. Amen. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. And God brought great deliverance. God brought a great victory. Amen. And there that day to where they sang David. Or Saul had killed his thousand. But David his ten thousand. But you'll read a little further. And you'll find he's in a cave. Amen. As I mentioned earlier. Where's God at? Does he know where I'm at? Does he see what I'm going through? And does he care? Amen. Before the psalm closed out, he said, I've trusted in thy salvation, in thy mercy. Come on now. Because he's dealt bountifully with me. Listen, we go through things, but he don't leave us in them. Hallelujah. He don't leave us in them. Right. Yes, he sees, he knows, and he cares. I must go through Samaria. I must. The disciples didn't know why. Their eyes were blind to the fact. When they got there, they went to go buy some meat. Amen. Something for them to eat. But he sat down where he was supposed to be. Amen. He knew right where to be. He sat there right on time. 
Amen. And he showed a woman. Amen. A woman that was rejected. A woman of sin. That he cared. Why was he must go through Samaria? Because there was someone who needed him. Amen. Someone that needed him. I believe today he's saying I must needs go to Aldrich. I must needs go to Aldrich today. Why? Because the Lord cares about you. I said because the Lord cares about you. Amen. Maybe you, someone's going to be tuning in a little later. Amen. On, on their on their on their device, their phone, amen, computer, or whatever, watching this video later. It could be in Montevallo, Jemison, amen, Birmingham, Montgomery. I don't know where. Another state, amen. But I believe the Lord saying I must needs go to that person today amen. because they need to know that I care. I am the answer for which they've been searching. My children are weary. They need to be strengthened, amen. We need to know that Jesus cares. Hallelujah. Stand with me. All across this building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up, musicians, if you would, please. Hallelujah. I'm going to give an altar call this morning. Amen. I want to ask you, do you need a Savior? He is a Savior. I want to ask you, do you need help this morning? He is our helper. I want to ask the child of God, do they need strength from Him? I want to remind you, He's your source. He's here, and He knows, and He cares. He sees, amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, Heavenly Father. I've done my best to preach the Word of God this morning that you have laid upon my heart, God, for this service. Oh, God, you know every man and woman. God, their heart, God, this morning here in this sanctuary. God, you know every heart, God. You know those searching. You know those hurting. You know those in need of a Savior. You know those in need of strength, God, as David was. Oh, God, you can touch this morning. God, you can save this morning. You can minister, God, what's needed in this altar of prayer. God's open this altar up, God. I pray your, your Holy Ghost Spirit, your Holy Ghost power deal. Deal with the heart. Talk to the heart, God. God, I preach, God, into the ear of man this morning. I believe you've spoken to their heart. God, touch them, we pray. Your holy name. Hallelujah. Heads bowed and eyes closed, please. Everyone, heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here, amen, and you know, you know you're the one that needs a touch and you just want me to pray for you. I'll be the only one looking around. Please, please, everyone, be, be respectful of this. And you just want to say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to come to you. But I do want to pray for you in my prayer time. If you know you're in need of a Savior this morning and you're saying, will you, would you please pray for me? Would you lift your hand and let me see it this morning so I can be praying for you. God bless you. You can put it down. God bless you. Hallelujah. Anyone else? God bless you. You can put it down. Hallelujah. God knows. God bless you. You can put it down. Hallelujah. I'll be praying for you. I sure will. But more than that, I want you to know Jesus came this morning and He's right on time. He's right on time. Do you need a Savior? He'll be that Savior this morning. You could come and kneel on this altar and give your heart to God. Now I'm going to ask the child of God, how many years feel like you've been the last mile of your way and you're wondering, does the Lord even see where I'm at? Let me see your hand so I can be praying for you this week. Amen. What about a child of God? Okay. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can put it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this altar's open as they begin to play and sing up here. Nothing I can do but pray for you. But Jesus is here to save you, to help you, to strengthen you, whatever you need. There's power in Him. If you'll come and kneel on this altar, we'll pray with you. If not, I'll be praying with you this week as they sing. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome to come. I need
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I appreciate you this morning. I know it's a very short, simple message. God laid it on my heart. Yes, He knows. Yes, He knows where you're at. Yes, He sees what you're going through. And absolutely, God cares for each and every one of us this morning. Every one of us here. Amen. Cares so greatly for us. I'm glad when he went and sat by the well that day, he didn't go as a Pharisee or some judge that was there to condemn. He just said, I know you need something, ma'am. And I've got it for you. He's going to be a judge. He's going to judge us one day, but right now is the day of repentance, of coming to Him. I'm glad He loved us enough. I'm glad He loved me enough to not only save me, but to continue to make me what He wants me to be. I'm glad when I got something that arises in me I didn't know about, maybe something I said sharply to someone and didn't realize it, he can convict me and I can make that right. That's how much God loves us. He allows His Spirit to work in us and work through us. Isn't He wonderful? Isn't He wonderful this morning? He loves you. The little children's church girl said, you mean I was on His mind? When he was on the cross? Absolutely. Absolutely. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. That's simple. That's just so simple. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. God bless you this morning. Amen. Don't forget our service tonight at 6 o'clock. Come praying. Come believe in God to touch us and help us. I'll tell you, we had a mighty move of the Holy Ghost Wednesday night. I think there was 11 of us here, but it felt like the house was full. Wow, what a service. I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I was here. Enjoy it. I needed that. We need those times. We need those times of refreshing. Amen. I love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord, for the service you give us this morning, for the songs that we sing in glory to you, in honor of you, in worship of you. You're the only one, God, Lord, that deserves any glory, any honor, any praise in this house. We are nothing. Oh, God, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are here for the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, I believe you have dealt with someone this morning. I pray that seed find good ground won't fall by the wayside, but find good ground. You go and you speak with us. You deal with us, oh God, each and every one. God, bring us back to this house of worship. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning.